Welcome to our video on ECG changes in hyperkalemia versus hypokalemia. In this video, we'll explore the distinctive electrocardiogram findings associated with these two conditions, their clinical implications, and the crucial role of ECG in diagnosing and managing them. Join us as we dive into the fascinating world of potassium imbalances and their impact on cardiac electrical activity. Let's begin our journey. Hyperkalemia and hypokalemia are two conditions that affect the levels of potassium in the blood. They can cause distinct changes in an electrocardiogram, reflecting the impact on cardiac electrical activity. Let's look at the ECG changes associated with each condition. Hyperkalemia refers to elevated levels of potassium in the blood. ECG changes in hyperkalemia progress through various stages as the potassium levels rise. Peak T waves, one of the earliest signs the T waves become tall and peaked. They may appear pointed or tent-shaped. Prolonged PR interval, as hyperkalemia progresses, the PR interval, which represents the time it takes for the electrical signal to travel from the atria to the ventricles, may become prolonged. Widen QRS complex, as potassium levels continue to rise, the QRS complex, representing ventricular depolarization, may widen. This occurs due to delayed conduction through the his perkin system. Loss of P waves. In severe hyperkalemia, the P waves may disappear, and the ECG may only show QRS complexes. This is known as a sine wave pattern and is indicative of severe cardiac conduction abnormalities. As hyperkalemia worsens, it can significantly increase the risk of life-threatening arrhythmias, such as ventricular fibrillation, which can ultimately result in cardiac arrest. Hypokalemia refers to low levels of potassium in the blood. ECG changes in hypokalemia typically include flattened T waves. One of the earliest changes observed in hypokalemia is the flattening of T waves. They may appear shallow or have an inverted appearance. U waves with further potassium depletion. Small deflections known as U waves may appear immediately following the T waves. U waves can be mistaken for T wave inversions if they become larger. ST segment depression. The ST segment, which connects the QRS complex to the T wave, may show a downward shift or depression. Appearance of prominent P waves. As hypokalemia worsens, the P waves may become taller and more prominent, often exceeding 2.5 mm in height. This change is known as P wave tallness. As hypokalemia worsens, it significantly elevates the risk of life-threatening arrhythmias, including torsades to points, a specific type of irregular heart rhythm. These dangerous arrhythmias have the potential to lead to cardiac arrest if left unaddressed. Hyperkalemia can be lethal due to its cardiac toxicity. Progressive hyperkalemia produces a unique sequence of ECG changes affecting depolarization, which are the QRS complex and repolarization, with widening QRS complexes. As serum potassium concentration rises further, QRS complexes continue to widen, eventually leading to a large undulating or sine wave pattern, a systole, and cardiac arrest. Recognizing early signs of T wave peaking is crucial for potentially life-saving interventions. Hyperkalemia is commonly seen in kidney failure, where potassium excretion is reduced. Take a look at this ECG displayed on the screen. We can clearly observe a significant widening of the PR interval accompanied by a sinus rhythm. Additionally, there is an extremely widened QRS complex that does not correspond to any specific conduction disturbance, such as left or right bundle branch flaw. This widened QRS complex is also associated with a sharply peaked T wave. These findings suggest a potential case of severe hyperkalemia. Hypokalemia results in distinctive STT complex changes, typically causing ST depressions with prominent U waves and prolonged repolarization. With hypokalemia, U waves often become enlarged and may exceed T wave height. Accurate QT interval measurement can be challenging due to merging T and U waves. Take a look at this ECG. It is a 24-hour monitoring tracing from a 4- to 6-year-old female patient with tubular renal disease, leading to severe and refractory hypokalemia. Notice how the QTC interval is extremely prolonged, making it easier for ventricular arrhythmias to occur and posing a high risk of torsades to point. If we were not familiar with the clinical case, we might consider a diagnosis of congenital long QT syndrome. 
it's important to note that ECG changes associated with hyperkalemia and hypokalemia can vary in severity and may not always follow a specific pattern. Additionally, other factors and comorbidities can influence ECG findings. Therefore, clinical correlation and interpretation by a healthcare professional are essential for an accurate diagnosis. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us today. Please share this video with your colleagues, subscribe to our channel, and give us a positive evaluation. We hope to see you soon in our next video.